Oh, we best get on with it before it actually starts pouring with rain. Uh, because it looks, oh, there's a kite over there. Oh, he's lovely, isn't he? Look at him go. Anyway, sorry, put off by a, a, a kite. Yeah, red kite. They're beautiful birds, they are. Fantastic. Anyway, let's get on with it. Right, let's start by just looking where each of the bulbs are. Where do you get access for each of the bulbs? Right, let's start with the headlight units and what bulbs we got. Well, first of all, we got two indicator bulbs, one about here, one there. They're accessed from down there. You wouldn't believe it, would you? But there's one, there's the tang for one of them. So that's the bulb which is nearest the, the centre of the car. So that just pushes down and then the bulb comes out. We'll go through how to do that. The other indicator bulb has to be done from the wheel well, and I'll show you the cover for that in a minute. Main beam and the halo, that's done from above. So let's have a look at the engine bay. There we go. And we go down here. Oh, wrong place. Down here. So let's go back up again. So right where this Bowden cable is, which does make life a bit harder, I must admit. And there's the cover for the main beam, for a little doofer there, you press it and then the cover goes backwards and out. And it's very easy to drop it down the sort of bowels of the car, I'm afraid. But there you go. And the halo is underneath it and you have to get the main beam cover off to get to that. So you can only just about see the end of it. And there it is there, that metal bit sticking out. That's obviously an LED unit, one of these three watt ones. And they're very good, very efficient a reasonable amount of light out of them. So main beam and halos, those are those two. Main beam, halos, done from the top up here. Xenon is done from the wheel well, so let's go and have a look at the wheel well. Now to get to one of the wheel well ones, you turn the wheel outwards on the side you're going to work on. So we'd work on the left hand side of the car here. So in we go and you can see the cover it's a plastic cover it's got two eight millimeter self tappers on it one there and one there and it's got little clips at the bottom so undo those and it flaps down and it's actually meant to have a little a bit of plastic strip that holds it in place when it falls down so you don't lose it but i did notice mine's broken so yeah that's where you get the scene on from this flap comes off you've got another cover similar to the one which is on the main beams that then clips off and then a big doof you have to twiddle anti-clockwise to get the get access to the xenon bulb um, i'll show you that in a minute and this is also where you get to the indicator bulb the second indicator so we've got the indicator up here and we have to go through this again i'm afraid and then it's a real struggle so you've got to get your hand up in there to get to it there's no little metal clasp on it this time you just get in there get your hand around there twiddle it anti-clockwise by a quarter of a turn and it'll pop out so there we go sounds easy when you say it quickly doesn't it so yeah they're awkward next one's slightly more awkward which is the fog lights and because they're such a pain i've put leds in mine so they're going to last a lot longer and polished up the lens on it so if you have a quick look at that you can see there's an led in there there you go and also i polished the covers on them and you do that with the 3m headlight restore, uh, restoring kit. Brilliant for that. It's an exact fit to this as well. And I'll show you how to do that as well. Unfortunately, the fog lights themselves have got from underneath the car. And uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've done it because I've had these LEDs in a few years now. And unfortunately, it means undoing two plastic covers, one each side, one for each of the fog lights, and the main big cover as well. So I can go through that. And you have to put the car up on ramps, obviously. You can't do it uh, like this. <laughs> I can't fit in there to start with. So yeah, two plastic covers, which uh, got lots of bolts on them. And uh, yeah, there's a whole array of bolts along here. I'm gonna turn the camera off in a minute. I do this so many times. There's bolts there that holds this plastic cover here in place. And then I'm afraid you have to get the main cover off as well. So yeah, that's a bit of a pain. Fog lights are a pain on the 6 Series, I'm afraid. Then we've got the side repeater. That's quite easy. Um, it hasn't moved for a while, then this bit gets stuck a bit. But we can go through exactly how to do this. This plastic uh, bit of trim, this chrome trim, 
goes backwards and then you get a trim tool and you twang it in there and this comes out as well. So it's best to know how it's done, uh, but it's reasonably easy to do it. Okay, so that's those. So go to the back of the car. First of all, the high level brake lamp is all LED. So on the convertible it is anywhere, that's where it sits. Uh, because obviously there's no, you can't have one on the back windscreen because it disappears when you've got the roof down. So yeah, that's all LED, so that's not going to go wrong. Thank goodness for that. Indicators got from inside the boot, so there's the covers for them. Same on the other side. Standard halogen, uh, sorry, standard tungsten bulb with an orange colour. And I have tried LEDs in those. Um, and they work for about a year and then give up. Um, because they, you've got to have a PTC device on them. Uh, difficult to stand these fellas up, but there we go, we're up. So there's the bulb itself. So it's got, they're all orange, got to be coloured. And uh, there we go, that's a PT dif PTC device I've soldered on the bottom. That stops you getting error messages. But with all PTC devices, they do fail after time. And with uh, indicator which is flashing on and off and on and off <laughs> don't last that long and i've put the tungsten bulbs back in because i'd much rather be safe because it's really bad if you have an indicator that fails on a car because then other car drivers haven't got a clue where you're going so yeah much rather have um working ones and digital looking ones like these leds then the last lights we've got well of course the brake lights uh their brake force um uh, indicators so they're all LEDs and people do worry sometimes and say well only half me LEDs are actually working well that's normal uh, when you press the brake pedal lightly half of them come on and if you press it really hard they all come on so don't worry if only half of them are coming on and that's the lens for the indicator and then down here we've got the reversing light a reflector and the rear fog light same on both sides Unfortunately, they have to be got from, uh, well, by removing the rear bumper. And as you can imagine, that's a reasonable job, uh, especially in a convertible with all this stuff in the back. You have to get half this trim out to get it, get to the screws. And then it's a lot of messing about. I don't think you can get it from underneath. I will do a bit of filming from underneath just to check. But anyway, that's where we go. That's all the lights. Excellent. Right, let's get on with it do the halos and the main beams. That's a good place to start. It's going to take a bit of messing about. I'll tell you that for nothing, especially with the cameras, because not only is it difficult to get to, it's not an impossible to see as well and have a camera in at the same time. Okie doke, so I'll best move some cameras around. Right, here we go then. I've had to move my camera into portrait mode, which is very unusual. And the main beams we've got, there's the cover for the main beam. And there's the halo underneath. You can just about see it down there. Probably get a better view down here. Okay, yeah, so that's not too bad. We can see what we're doing a bit there. Right, now you usually need two hands to get the main beam covers off. So I'm going to have to try and do this with one hand. Here we go, hand in. Ah, that's got it a bit easier then you make sure you don't drop it and there we go it's out right i'm gonna to have to put the camera down there so you can see what's going on i'm afraid it's all going to be sort of upside down and a bit weird this week so there's the main beam two terminals on it and uh and at the top it's got a little plastic tang that you just lift up to get off now, normally with halogens, you mustn't touch the glass envelope of the bulb uh, because that doesn't do them any good at all. And if I can focus in a bit better there, touch the screen. There we go, that's better. Yeah, but in this case, it's not impossible to get the thing out without touching the envelope of the bulb. Um, so I'm afraid you have, just have to make compromises. OK, so I can't have the phone in there and my hand in there, so I'm going to have to move the phone over, refocus it where we are working. Hand in, find the tang, so we don't pull off the connector yet. We find the little plastic tang first. 
which isn't easy there we go I've got it now and then out comes the bulb so there we go that's the bulb halfway out and there's the glass envelope Osram Nightbreaker in there I've got about the best halogens you can get and uh, so we'd at this point we we'll take it out and as I say it's very difficult not to touch the envelope so I've got to clean the bulb before I replace it so there we go and then we'll just twang off the terminals from the back of the bulb and uh, replacing it as they say is a reversal of the other thing and it's a lot easier to watch it from the front to get it the right way up and I'll show you what I mean so you can just sort of poke it and then you're not quite sure what's going on because you can't see with your hand in the way so what we do is we look from the front there we go so the bottom goes in first and then the top twangs into position notice, notice that the reflector just bends around as you do it I oh know it's absolutely hopeless isn't it anyway that's in there perfectly located that's fine so he's in so can we oh, there we go got a good look at him there he's in now which way up the camera oh, yeah, I've got to turn the camera the same way up go back in there again so you can see without pressing any of the buttons so there we go that's the uh, main beam damn fiddly and yeah I'm gonna to have to take that out again and clean the bowl because I did touch it so there we go halos just as much fun these ones are there we go and then I'm gonna to have to do that by hand as well now they're not too difficult to get out they sort of a tur slight turn anti-clockwise and then out they pop simple as that and as I say this is an LED replacement let's get the focus working again there we go so it's only a 3 watt one makes absolutely no difference uh, when you buy 20 watts 40 watts 50 watts first of all then eBay just make it up they're not anywhere near that wattage at all and if you did use 20 or 40 watts then you're going to damage the lamp control module anyway but they're all lies anyway um, because they don't uh, demand that much current much less current than that there we go so and this one doesn't have any sort of ballast ballast resistors or anything like that so the way you get this you just get a bulb like this in its holder and a connector and you just plug it into the original connector that would go on the back of the halo bulb yes so here we go better picture with the light not on so you can see two tangs there there's one at a funny angle number two's at a funny angle and the third one slightly smaller and not at a funny angle and that's the top and so what you do to make it a bit easier to get in oh blimey it's windy out here today right anyway here we go we just mark the halo with a couple of green lines and that denotes the top because by the time you've got your hands down there and uh, try to wiggle it into position <laughs> it's not going to be in the right place anymore and you're never quite sure which way to turn it back round again all right put me felt tip away right i'm going to have to start recording again because i need the light on and i need it to be upside down so hold on right here we go this is not an impossible it really is i don't know why bmw how they managed to make it just so pig awkward to change bulbs it really is ridiculous and these halos oh, they're just so tricky to put in you really can't see what you're doing even from the front so i need to get my hand right down there find the hole that it goes into and then this is this is a bit which is fiddly now have i still got a picture well you can see my hand that's about it i move my hand a bit that was the bowden cable so it's just slightly anti-clockwise of so i mean that looks like it's in place doesn't it but 
I can assure you it isn't, it's just not locating at all. So you've got to find where the lugs go in. And I'm rotating it, nothing's happening of course. Can't see a sausage. And see now we've got to the position where we're not quite sure which way up we are, but we can see that tang there. See the green marks. So that's it, both sides have gone in. And then we're just a matter of turning it clockwise. And you think, oh, that's it, it's in, brilliant. It isn't, because I can see the bottom's dropped out. So I have to undo it again, make sure all three sides are in, and then turn it clockwise again, and we're in that time. Thank goodness for that. Right, so yeah, that's how it is with the halos and the main beam. So have a look down there. We can just about see down there that it's got a, a green mark on it. I'll just see if I can change it here. So you can see the rib at the back of the halo and that's got a sort of just a little green line on it along there that tells us which way up it is. So that green line goes where the smaller not angled tang goes. Okie doke, so that's the halos. They're great fun, as I said, they're LEDs. A lot whiter but not a great deal brighter. And don't waste your time on any of the eBay ones that have hundreds of watts. Really doesn't make a difference at all because they are light pipes, uh, the halos on these cars. So if we have a look here, so these bits here, they've got no bulbs in or anything like the later models have. They're a light pipe and that's what we used to do with the old E32s when we wanted halos on them. We get a bit of Perspex uh, rod, bend it and then put lines in it. That's exactly the same method they've used on this. So yeah, a light pipe and the light goes off in both directions. So it goes to this halo and it goes to the halo on the Xenon as well. And it really doesn't make any difference how much power you put in them. Um, they really only light up to a certain amount. I'll put them on so you can see what I mean. We're on. There we go. So, I mean, looking at them here, they don't look too bad at all, but uh, I mean, they're not that great. And that's about as bright as you can get. I have tried more powerful ones and they made absolutely no difference at all, apart from one of the, which was meant to be 20 watts and actually took about five watts, was dimmer than these three watt ones. And these are true three watt versions. So let's go backwards a bit. Oh, Pippi, that's a good boy. And as you can see there, they're all right. They're all right, but not perfect, are they? Not as bright as the later models, but that's what to, to be expected, I'm afraid, uh, because the later models use completely different technology. So there we go, halo's done, main beam's done. Of course I haven't put the main beam cover back on again, so I'm going to have to try and do it with one hand again. So let's have a look at the cover first of all. There we go, that's what it look, the cover looks like. Got little doofers at the bottom and a clip at the top. And that clip clips into the little place down there, that's where it clips onto. That bit there. And so it's really a case of balancing it until you get it on into those two holes to start with. So stick you back down there again, which I do have to hold on to the camera at the same time. So try that side, this side. Uh, move the cable out of the way, I think. Don't want to bend that Bowden cable though, because that's the bonnet one. Now I have lost one down here before. And unfortunately that means putting the car back up on ramps. Um, which we have to do anyway for the fog lights. Yes, I'm afraid. To change fog lights, the car has to go up on ramps. You have to get underneath it. And all sorts of daft stuff. Now, is that in place? No, one of the legs is in, one of them isn't. And I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, that's it, I think. There we go. And then it's just a case of pushing it into position. That's it. There we go, that's in. So main beams back in, halos in. What next? Well, xenons, I suppose, and then the indicators. Well, I can show you one of the indicators 
while we're here. First of all, put them on so you can see that there's actually two bulbs at the front. Right, so we'll put the uh, uh, hazard lights on, I think. Right, so there we go. You can quite distinctly see that we've got two bulbs in there. There's one round here. And there's one here too. Now that one we can get to reasonably easily if you know where to go of course and it's down here so here we are back where the main beam is and there you can see this little bit of metal here and that's the first of the indicator bulbs. Now can you see am I put lights on or something? No, <laughs> it'll start flashing as soon as I pop it out. There we go. So let's take you back out a bit. So yeah, there's the tang. Push it downwards, pull it backwards, and the bulb comes out. And I switch the indicators off. Yeah, I know the lights are on. Right, that's off. Righty ho, where are we? Here we are. So there's the tang, I'll pull him out so you can see the bulb. I have to put the lights on the camera a second. Oh, there we go, that's better, look. So the white bit is the back of the indicator assembly. And there's the bulb in there. So you see, it's, it takes a certain amount of dexterity to get them out. And there's the bulb. So that's an orange bulb. Can't really stick LEDs in there. The design of these, the LEDs, which might take its place, just can't get the heat away. So it has to be an, uh, a radiant bulb, which of course uh, tungsten lights are. Can't stick an LED in there without any success. Alrighty, so let's fiddle about with that until you've got to land it so it feels like it's going to go in. And then just lift that catch up again. So let's do that again. Get a focus in on that. Where's my finger? There it is. There's the catch. Move him downwards. Lamp comes out. Stick him back in again. Clamp goes back up. Ah! There we go. That's the first indicator. So that's the indicator bulb which is here. Now the one over there I've never changed before. But I'm guessing that's done from the wheel arch. Here we go. So we've got the other wheel at this angle. Oh, it does make it easier. That's why I turned the wheel. There we go. Let's start that bit again. So we've gone on to the left-hand side of the car. Wheels turned outwards like that. And there we go. We can see the two 8mm bolts there, self-tappers. And that, and I can get my screwdriver type device in there, so I'll get that. Beep, beep, beep. Right, here we go then. Oh, this is all good fun, isn't it? Just for changing light bulbs. And even after this, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get to the indicator. But I'm willing to give it a go. Is he out? He's out. One out. So yeah, you can imagine doing this at the side of the road, can't you? Excuse me, sir, your headlights doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, well, just give me 20 minutes. Oh no, make that five hours to change the bulb. There we go, cover off. Righty ho. So we've swapped cameras. I've had a go at doing this. With my, without the camera in the way, and it's not too bad. So where's it gone again? Yeah, that's the scene on. Oh, there it is. Now if I put the camera about there, I might be able to get my hand in. There's the cable. Uh, Anti-clockwise turn. And there we go. We're out. Another orange bulb and not suitable for an LED. I have seen LEDs that uh, purport to fit in those fittings, but 
there's no way you can get rid of the heat from them because that I'm quite sure that is but that's a few watts isn't it that one quite a few watts and there's the where you undo it or have a little do for the press there it is that's the do for there to press get the connector off and now I've got to get that back in after fiddling around with it ah, not so hard oh, yeah, I'm sorry you can't see a sausage where I've got got my hand in there but I just pushed it into the aperture turned it half a turn uh, actually just a few degrees oh, for goodness sake where is it there it is that is that's it that's it so cable out the way hand on it little t few degrees turn out it comes stick it back in again ah. that's it he's back in again so there you go that's the xenon oh, which is just turns this and the indicator bulb thank goodness for that now i'll put that cover back on and just for completeness sake that uh cover goes on just like the the ones on the back of the main beam so it's got two lugs at the bottom one there and one there press down very hard on that clip up there and then the whole thing will come backwards a yeah, very difficult thing to film really anyway that's it that's those two covered right cover back into position i've put the two self tappers in uh, loosely let's do them up and the second one oh sorry about the terrible camera work but i've got my hand in a wheel well while holding a the camera there we go they're on I can actually show you that probably better in one of my other videos, uh, one on clearing the water drain. So we had that wheel arch out and uh, had that out before. Okay, so. Indicators done, xenon done, main beam done, halos done. Fog lights. What a pain. Yeah, these really are a pain as well. Um, because you have to get them from underneath and that means getting the car up on ramps and I'll show you pictures of the car going up on ramps and getting to the back of these now, the ones I've got in here are uh, LEDs and they do work rather well I can just about see the LED there there we go yeah they're very good indeed they bung out a lot of light uh, because the original um, an h7 in there um or an h4 can't remember which i'll look it up before i finish um yeah they're they're pretty horrible beam pattern and everything so this uh the lens i've cleaned up the lens um using the 3m uh headlight restoring kit and that gets them looking really bright and shiny again so it's absolutely perfect and then an LED bulb uh, with a device in there to stop you getting errors. So, yep, I'm afraid this one's all done from underneath the car. So, yeah, I can put out all the information about doing that and the LED that I used and so on. It's on MeekNet already. Um, but, yeah, I'm not going under the car today, but I'll show you exactly how to do it. There we go. And then the last ones we've got. Well, the last ones which... Uh, practical to change anyway of course the rear ones we've got led for the high level brake light so i've got a whole row of leds there they're not going to fail so we don't have to worry about those righty ho indicators rear indicators there we go we've just got a little doofer there pull him off at the top so he's got a couple of tangs at the top and that uh, clips in at the bottom and the indicator bulb is very easy to get to it's just here yeah i've come across this before where they 
it looks like it's going to be easy to come out it doesn't want to come out so it's the standard tungsten bulb in there they've tried leds in there but um they do need uh, a ptc device a po positive temperature coefficient device there we go he's in so i might have a, one of them around here go through all the junk that's here Yeah, uh, obviously thrown them away. Oh, and there's one. There we go. So that's uh, one of the LEDs I have tried. And uh, yeah, they get a great amount of light out. So pretty powerful things. Um, probably about three or four watts. But they need a PTC device on the back. I'll stand it up so you can get a look. Let's set the focus about there. So yeah, that's a PTD, PTC device on the back. That stops you getting errors. But the problem with indicators, of course, is that uh, PTCs don't like being switched on and off too many times before they actually give up. And that's what that one did, which is why I removed it. So I found it, it's much safer to have one which works rather than one which looks clever. So yeah, I removed those. So you can go back in there and replace them with the standard tungsten bulbs so that be a 21 watt bulb and then we can put the cover back on so I put the bottom in first and then you have to manhandle these tangs back into position like that keys in so yeah that's the easy one that's the the uh, rear indicator so okie dokes side repeaters um, all you have to do is slide this bit backwards and if it hasn't been moved for a while it'll be pretty stuck in there so you'll need a trim tool so get it right here push backwards and then it will pull out and you can see it's got these claws here these angled things they slot into these holes so just get rid of that this got a spring clip at the back and claws at the front and you'd think you'll pull this end out but no what you do is you push it from the front like that and then get the claws out and so there you go there's the spring clip at the back and there's the claw at the front and to change bulbs with these you just twiddle this half a turn like that and out we go so it's got a little orange bulb in there looking a bit sorry for itself it's a pin sprayed at some point uh, so i guess this this wing was damaged at some point it's been re-sprayed that's a bit strange isn't it it's get sprayed like that how strange and uh, as you can see there's two cutouts to get the the bits on the side there in so they just line up with those in we go turn them half a turn and then remember that it's that at the back Put the back in first and then push in the front there you go and this then just goes on like this and then push it forwards until it's flush with that yeah it doesn't seem a very secure device but it does work and there we go that's the side repeaters done right last one and i forgot all about it is the license plates or number plate lights two lights of course I've replaced mine with a pair of LEDs and that one fizzled out after about a year or well, half the LEDs fizzled out that one's still going just about so you yeah, get errors on the dash for those uh, so I've got some more on order uh, they don't cost much as long as they last a year or so they just push the LEDs too hard that's a trouble we put less current through the LEDs, they'd last forever, but now I just want to get the brightest in the world. There you go. Okay, to get them out, you just use a trim tool. Uh, there's my trim tool. Use the thinnest end. Just get it in there. And then give it a tweak. And out it comes. There we go. Now, of course, the LED kits usually come with another lead so that's where you'd normally plug in your number plate light with this connector here but with these kits you get a lead another connector a lead 
and a thingy bob which you can put in either way round. That's so if you've got polarity opposite then you just take that out, turn it half a turn, stick it back in again. So yeah, number of lights, they're extremely bright and they shouldn't really be that bright. And then after a while they just fizzle out, get too hot. So yeah, normally you just have this sticking out and your number plate light will be on the end of that. Put a couple of clasps on it. There you go, these things here. Press them in, disconnect from the number plate light. I put up a picture of the original one and to put it back in, you just sort of put the clasp side in first. So can I see what I'm doing? Not really. Oh yeah, Pippi's coming to help. He's a good boy. And uh, yeah, so you put that left hand side in, then just push in the other side and that's it. And it's the same with the other one as well. It isn't the other way around. It's still the right hand side, isn't it Pippi? Yeah, it is. So yeah, the same with the other side. Do come flying out sometimes. There we go, he's out. So he's the same. Same funny lead on it and everything. Put the left hand side in first. Make sure it's in position. Click it in. Oh, done, eh, Pippi? That's him sorted. Right, for the fog lights, this is the last one of all the lights, thank goodness. Up on ramps, I'm afraid, and I'm using a sort of copy of Rhino ramps. Very good, wouldn't use anything else. So unfortunately, all the underneath covers have to come off, including the large one. I think there's about 10 quarter turn fixings on that. I'm doing one of the back ones there. So yeah, it's all right palaver to do the fog lights. And then we've got the side covers here and they're uh, more eight millimeter self tappers. And then this cover comes down and then at last we can get to the fog light itself. And the fog light is clipped into the uh, fog light plasticky thing um, and just turn the whole bulb and the holder all the rest of it anti-clockwise by about a quarter of a turn and out it pops and normally um, I would use Osram light breakers that's what I had in there for quite a long time a pair of those they're fantastic lights but it's such a pain to get to it that I decided to fit LED lights to it um, for two reasons it's a lot brighter to start with and oh here I'm polishing up the lenses and I'm using the 3M headlight restoring kit and I'm using the Trizact pad here which is about 3000 grit or something um, just sort of looks like you've completely ruined it and last time I did this I used all the masking tape and all the rest of it but this is just a sort of touch up rather than starting from scratch. So yeah, Trizac pad. And then after that, I use the polishing pad and that's a soft pa foam pad and you get uh, stuff to put on it in the 3M kit. And you just have a whiz around it. I'm not even sure I've taken off the, the cover. Oh yeah, it looks like I have. At least I've taken off the black cover. That's a good start. Yep, so put this compound onto the 3M polishing foam pad. And then give it a good whizzing and uh, it comes they come out absolutely spotless they look absolutely fantastic after that and that's all that i did the first time i replaced uh, the bulbs tungsten bulbs with uh, sorry the halogen bulbs with uh, osram night breakers halogen bulbs and you get a reasonable amount of light out it but it's not that powerful so i thought the next time I'm going to change bulbs, I'll put some LEDs in there. And that's what I did next time is I put some uh, powerful LEDs in there, um, repolished the lens and leveled the fog light device. There's a couple of screws on it, one which does sort of left and right. Oh, this is where I put the, uh, initially did it. And I put all the masking tape around and all the rest of it. Anyway, that's not looking too bad at all, is it? I've put the black cover back on again. Yep, so I got some powerful LEDs. Um, I think it's H4B for the fog lights. Um, I won't go through the whole procedure of how they're um, modified to fit because it's best to fit unless you can um, use Kali or something like that to um, cancel out the fog light checking. You're going to get a couple of things. You'll get a bit of flashing and it will complain uh, that the fog lights aren't working so I've put a 
PTC device in the loom on my ones. To be honest, I'm not sure if it's needed. I've never tried them without it. It might be the case that uh, they are perfectly error free without these devices stuck on them. But anyway, I put them in the lead and uh, then they just didn't work at all. And the reason they didn't work is the polarity was wrong. So the LEDs as um, bought actually had the wrong polarity. So when I plugged them in, they did nothing. And uh, what you could do is you could sort of turn the connector the other way round and then plug them in. And then you have to hold the connector together with tie wraps. And uh, then they work fine and you haven't had any problem ever since. But what I did do is I went back and or at least on one of them, if I remember rightly, and uh, swap the wiring over. And the procedure on MeekNet, and I'll put a leak up, uh, link up, shows you exactly how to do it uh, from start to finish. And it's a much better idea to have it written down rather than trying to do it uh, from a video. So yeah, I'll leave it like that. Anyway, the final outcome is that LED fog lights are 10 times better than the ones with halogens in. You get a good clear cut off, absolutely perfect. And they're great for driving lights as well. They don't dazzle people, uh, which is excellent. Anyway, this uh, video has been quite long enough already, coming up to 45 minutes or something. Absolutely ridiculous just for change. It just shows you how difficult it is to change the light bulbs on the 6 Series. I, it's absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? It's crazy. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and I'll see you next time.